on tour what is it like between gigs like does it get like really crazy hmm. like what is what is the tour life with gamma bomb we do have stories we have fun funny stories but the the uk tour was quite tame but we do have funny stories. we played in a brewery in newcastle and that was a uh, <laughs> That was an experience. There's this um, home, like uh, this uh, brewing, kind of local brewing company, and they brew beer and they, you know, produce cans and stuff like that. And they also have a venue. And it's a really good venue. It's in a kind of a warehouse. And like they do fill it up like, you know, it's like about 400 capacity. But when we went backstage, we saw this like, these creative, like just aluminium cans. Just like no no label, no nothing. They're like, what are these? Are they just like... Uh, like faulty you know gone off beers like no 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 they're like dude good beer it's just they didn't fill up to the top properly or you know they're perfect and we're like oh why really and he goes yeah you can have one <laughs> oh, can i have one it's like yeah i'll take the whole lot if you want like we don't want we can't sell them. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow we, we took all the cans and we filled the whole fat van with cans the, the back the back of the seat just Holy all shit. Cans. and, and we drank just... everything with one of them as well Nice. We took about, I'd say we took about 80 cans out of the place. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, we're fucking, by the end of the tour, we drank every single one of them. And they were amazing. It was a posh microbrewery. The beers were delicious, all different varieties. Yeah, it was really good. It was, it was it like is, these. They're like, when we get a chance, when we get a chance, we will still absolutely do the wrong thing. That's 100% yeah. guaranteed. <laughs> but like, back in the day, I think part, part of the, the deal is now we're much better at saying, okay, there's 12 gigs. Let's take it easy this evening and we'll go crazy tomorrow or whatever but i think back in the day we didn't really know to do that so a lot of things like where philly would hurt his voice it was because we'd be in the reaper barn at 3 a.m screaming and singing tom mm. jones and stuff like that being sore actually you know that's a true story we yeah we were in the reaper barn with bonded by blood and uh we went around all these different pubs and the last and we've been screaming our heads off for a week and the last pub that we went to was playing Tom Jones. And I have an awful weakness for Tom Jones. And uh, yeah, I started screaming. And then we went back to the bus. And I was all like... <laughs> so yeah, like back in the day, definitely. We were talking about it on the UK tour this time because this one was definitely the sensible grown-up version of that where at night time, we might cut loose more if the show was a really good one and tomorrow wasn't a big drive. We would kind of cut loose drinking and having the crack and talking rubbish until the wee hours. But uh, we were talking about back in the day, we would be at like two in the afternoon in the van going to the next show and the win the windows would be down and we'd all be smoking joints. Everyone would be drinking beer. <laughs> Everyone would be drinking beer at two o'clock and we wouldn't be playing until 11 at night. <laughs> be there. Now, to be fair, when we go and play festivals, we still do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Tell them about, uh, arriving in Belgium story because that, um, that's, um, uh, that that's, that's not that long ago, it's only about two years ago, is it? Or no, it was I mean, we did a Belgium show with uh, it was around like this time in 2016. I think Eva were playing that, um, that, that night. Anyway, the van driver picked us up and got us in the van, and he's like, Oh, yeah, there's beer and stuff. And I don't know, we, we had some, we had some hash, I think it was hash. And it's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah. Oh, he's like, Oh, let us smoke up. Say again. They supplied a whole bunch of weed as well as the beer. Oh, they supplied like and like okay, we're rolling up and smoking away and like yeah, and like literally we were driving after about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes driving, we're like smashing cans. We're smashing. like and we're having and, and it's about eleven a.m., eleven thirty a.m. Oh my god! <laughs> smashing cans, uh, absolutely smashing the cans, screaming and laughing, telling stories. You know, we're on holiday, right? It's like a boy's holiday and suddenly they've had a deal of beer and weed when you get off the plane. So like, we're in the car screaming and laughing, the car's full of smoke. <laughs> and then we go around this corner, we're driving down like, you know, like a rural motorway thing. And he just turns off to the right, I don't know, to go through this village or whatever. And the instant he turns off to the right into this village, there's army men. Right? Oh my God. And the army men are like holding their little machine guns, little, <laughs> you know, their little tip bag hats. And they're like standing there and the van slows right down and pulls up beside them. And we're all like, <laughs> like <laughs> at this guy. And we're literally like, second <laughs> like, in India night or whatever. The guy, the guy pulls open the side door of the van, smoke rolls out like the wee pope. And we're all sitting in the back of the van like, 
hey, nothing. We're not doing anything. Hey, you know. And then uh, <laughs> the guy in the front <clears throat> is speaking Flemish or whatever, you know. And he starts trying to rat, rat us to the, the soldiers. And we know he's trying to rat us. He's always, and he's pointing at us. And we're like, whoa, 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 hold on. You, we thought we were pals, you know? And the soldiers, no. like, what do you got there? And stuff, and we're like, nothing, we haven't got anything. And then I think they decided it wasn't worth it because it was 11 in the morning. <laughs> I didn't so, you Wow. Yeah, somebody did like, throw or, something or like, something, and then we just drove on. Like, you know? he, he opens the door van, and he just pops his head, and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> okay, smoky, smoky. one of the best ones was we we were on a european tour one time in the winter in an rv and we were hanging up all our like would you know you try to wash your socks but then like they can't get dry because it's so cold all the time and, you know we hung them up like in the little top cupboards you know in an rv you have the little cupboards up above for storing yeah. stuff you'd like close the cupboard with them hanging down right and we were crossing over in Italy and the Carabinieri, like the military police are stopping us. <clears throat> and we're all sitting at the little booth in the back of the RV trying to look nice because we had hash in the seat, wasn't it, Joe? There's a load of hash in the seat. And we're sitting at the table, all hands on the table, like pulled upright, nice smiles. The Carabinieri <laughs> opens the back door. He's talking to the driver, boopity boopity boopity, he's talking to the driver, right? And then it, the driver's like, he needs all your passports. And we're like, yep, yep, yep. And we'll pass them all out through the front. And we're all sitting at the table going, okay, look nice, look nice. And then he comes around to the, the back door and he opens the door and he, <laughs> he takes off his little pillbox hat and he leans in really dramatically to take a look around. And as he leans in, his face goes straight into the wet socks that are hanging off the cupboard above him. Oh, my like, God. Like a car wash. And... He does the most amazing double take, like, huh, huh, like, can you imagine? <laughs> a fussy Italian policeman, Jesus Christ, he probably uh. got all night and gets these wet socks in the face and the look of absolute horror on his face. And he just slowly reversed without saying anything, just reversed out of the RV and closed the door. <laughs> and we like, doesn't get yeah. paid enough. Doesn't, doesn't get paid enough. <laughs> They're like, yeah, like we still, we still misbehave, you know, we go and play festivals and. We'll, we'll drink quite a bit. Think about festivals. Some of them have like, you know, particularly the ones in Belgium and the Netherlands, they always give like little small cups, like half the size of these. And they're like, oh yeah, just bring the cup and we'll fill you. You know, they always have a kind of a couple of kegs. And so that kind of ends a bit like, okay, I'll have one. Oh, I'll have another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah just like eight drinks later. Yeah, one of the recent festivals... Um, one of the recent festivals was like a real flashback to back in the day because we played the show. We went walking around to talk to people, and then we met these dudes who were like, "Come out to the the, the camping field, like the parking camping." So oh, we, yeah. like, we walked out of the festival to this field where all these people had parked up their RVs and their cars and everything. And man, these guys had like a rental van and that you know music and amazing beer and smoke and everything. And we were like just hung around drinking and listening to Dio in a field. And it was exactly like something we would have done 15 years ago. Very cool. Still, we wow. get when we get a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Um, <laughs> amazing, amazing stories. Uh, um, so fun. <laughs> okay. right. I, I expected, I expected <laughs> something like that. Honestly, well, there's a lot of worse things have happened, but we're not going to start saying them on podcast. <laughs>